What? Hang on. Before I tell you the story. Oh yeah, we're back to this. We're doing some some A and P stuff here. Okay, so we were talking about how to get the how to get the screen out. And all right, I'm gonna get this. Got to do it the hard way. All right. So fuel comes in through the screen. How often do we check the screen? Every annual Yeah, check it often. Not overhaul. Yeah. All right, fuel's going to come down in here, and the first thing it's going to run into is the manual mix job. This is a hard picture because this looks a lot like that. So it's kind of hard to figure out which one's the throttle lever and which one's not the throttle lever. Well, the good thing is it tells you right there, manual mixture control. So this goes to which knob in the cockpit? Red. Red. The red one. And this goes to the black, black, one. black one. Okay. So, but this goes to the black knob and it also, there's a uh, figure one of these in parallel that goes to the throttle valve. See, it looks like this. So here's the actual throttle valve. And then that one we're just looking at is like right off of here. So as this one moves, this one moves and they work together. We're going to see that on some other stuff too. So, all right. So back up here, looking at what's going on. Fuel is going to come down through here through the manual mixture control. Well, if I've got it pulled all the way out, that's called what? It's called idle cutoff. Although does it only work in idle? You guys can participate too I'm in the back. No, it doesn't. So it's really, we should not call it idle cutoff. It's just, cut it cuts it off. You don't have to be in any position you want. It cuts it off. Well, how does it do that? This disc right here rotates and it covers up these holes. It doesn't allow any more fuel to go through. That is idle cutoff. So, all right, so fuel comes around, and I don't really know why it's shaped like it is. It's always kind of been like, why is it shaped like that? And I don't know. Fuel comes around through here into this chamber right here. This red fuel is called what kind of fuel? Unmetered. Unmetered, because we haven't metered anything, really. I mean, we went through the, uh, the mixture control. So it hasn't been metered, though. So it's going to come into here. And, oh, by the way, it comes up through here. Where do you think this one's going to? The unmetered fuel in the servo. All right, so it's going to come out through here, through this right here, and that is called the? Main so there's the main metering jet right there. Now, aside from that, what do we call this valve right there? The idle valve. idle valve. So at wide open throttle, this main metering jet is just the right size to work in conjunction with the fuel nozzles. But anything less than that, that would let a little bit too much fuel in. So this restricts it a little bit, right? And especially at idle, because at idle, we're gonna use a spring to hold open the servo. So, so, so this, a no, it's a figure, just a disc that's eccentric. Well, uh, actually it's, 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 if you look at it's offside, it's not, it looks like, uh, I'll show you. A snail shell. Exactly. Like that. So, how much time did you spend looking at the solar eclipse today? Without <laughs> glasses on. At least 20 minutes. Yeah. See, I got that. I called him sun. Then I talked about the solar eclipse. That was cool. Uh, there we go. It looks like this. That's the idle valve. Idle valve. So you can see how there's a, this, this, this little piece slides over it and back. So right here, idle position. So it's covering up almost all of it, leaving just a little tiny bit coming out. Little tiny hole. And then as we go into cruise, it's going to open that hole up all the way. And then, you know, you can see it fully open. It opened up this right here. So that means it has a, open up a second jet. I would call that power enrichment. If you wanted to, you don't have to if you don't. Oh, that's a better drawing right there of the two um, levers. And it is right there, too. That's the connector. So we're actually looking at this arm right here in that drawing right there. <laughs> this one here. That's connected to throttle? Yes, goes to the throttle. Can you go back to that last picture that, that it was 
They got a little lost in sort of the sound of Crusade words. Well, he was. was. Well, I mean, they didn't make sense. They this one? Yes. Okay, then that's good. See, I like an honest guy who's participating. Fuel comes in through here, goes to the inside of the screen, out the screen. First thing it runs into is the mixture control. From the mixture control, where we can adjust lean and rich and idle cutoff, it'll come into this chamber. I have no idea why it is shaped that way. It'll also come out this way and go back to the fuel servo. After that, it's going to come through here and go into the main metering jet. The main metering jet, just like all main metering jets, is the perfect size for wide open throttle. It is not the perfect size for anything less than that. So we have that hole with the sliding deal on it. Well, that's that's what this is here, but it's just drawn different. So you could picture this if you wanted to off sides, like this side's longer than this side. And as you rotate it, it just, or just, you know. Oh, that's that part that you just showed. So that's that yeah. disc part. The disc part. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when it's, when it's not at full power, it's a smaller size. Yes. Yep. So this right here adjusts the size of the orifice. Hey, that's on the both sides, the mixture? Uh, yes, you have that on both sides. Same yeah, same concept, both sides. Okay, I do not know what this is about. I think it has to do with setting up the... Yeah, it's just a check valve. It doesn't go anywhere. It's it just I think it's for setting up the system. All right. So fuel then comes out of here and goes to the metered fuel. So goes off to the metered fuel. So let's go over that way. Coming down around. There we go. So now we have this piece right here, which we looked at before. This is the other system. This is the same thing we just looked at, but they flipped it. It's like upside down and back. Yeah, upside down backwards. So, what do we have right here? Impact air. Impact air. You sure about that? Venturi suction. Venturi suction. I told you they, they made it backwards. So, Venturi suction, which is going to make the pop it go right or left? To the left. And then we have impact air. It's going to come in here, make the pop it valve go to the left. Here we had metered fuel pressure coming, I mean, unmetered, unmetered coming here, which tends to close the pop it and metered coming in here, which tends to push left and close the pop it. Which one is higher? This unmetered. I do not know why that is there. I do not know. I could make up some sort of lie, but I can't think of one right now. But see how this is really big and that's really small? That's yeah. because this side's bigger than that side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when we increase air metering force, the ball comes off its seat and opens and allows more fuel to flow. All right. We can make it complicated and talk about pressures and volume. But when this opens up more, fuel comes out and we get more fuel. Fuel. All right. So we get more fuel. By the way, it's going to be more pressure. That's going to be very important. Fuel is going to then come out the side of the servo. Because remember, all of this, even though I'm scrolling all over the page, it's all attached to one unit. But now it's going to go off to the top of the engine where we're going to get into the flow divider. Flow divider. Okay. So fuel under pressure comes in the flow divider. Now, it's important that we understand that it's pressure. Uh, Pressure is directly related to the flow. Because what do we have right here? A what kind of gauge? A PSI gauge that reads gallons per minute. So if you're a pilot sitting in the cockpit and you look up, you have a gauge that says gallons per minute. But it, we know because we're mechanics and we're cool that it's really a what kind of gauge? A pressure so gauge. So pressure gauge calibrated in gallons per minute. Or gallons per hour, maybe. Yeah, that'd be more, make more sense. GPH, gallons per hour. All right, so fuel then comes up to, yeah. fuel comes up into here, pressurizes this, comes up through here. There's a diaphragm right here. This represents ambient air. It just If it wasn't like that, then if this is closed, then the diaphragm has to push against captured air, and that, that creates a calibration issue. 
these vents need to be open and not facing the airstream. If they're facing forward, if they have a vent that faces forward and the ram air comes in the engine cowling, it'll pressurize this and push it back down. All right, so in this particular system, they have what they call V slots down here. And what that is, imagine you have a V slot and that as the diaphragm moves up, it's only at this point right here. So then fuel has this spot to come out of. Then as pressure increases, it will open it up to that. And then we have this much area for fuel. So the Bendix system does help to regulate fuel at idle settings. So at some point, you're going to get enough pressure in here to open this all the way up. And then the V slot is all the way open and it no longer does any regulating. And the fuel then comes through the V slot and goes, see how they've even changed the color back to kind of a pinkish sort of indicating it's been regulated a little bit. It's going to go off there, off into the nozzles. Follow so far? Okay, if it is a normally aspirated engine, not turbocharged, then we have ambient pressure around the outside of the nozzle, and there is a little hole right here that, because it's like a Venturi effect of the fuel coming through, it sucks the fuel in. The air in, even though I said fuel. Fuel goes through here and it sucks the air in. Thank you for that. And sprays out. All right, but here's the thing here while we're looking at this. If we got a blockage right there, a partial blockage, and now do we get the same amount of fuel out this one as we do this one? No. no. So this nozzle right here is a partial blockage, which means that this cylinder is going to run Later. lean, but we have a certain amount of fuel coming in. Now the fuel that didn't go through this nozzle has to go out this one and this one and a fourth one that's not being shown. And so that means the other cylinders have a potential to run rich. rich. However, we had a blockage. So what happens to the pressure right here? It went up. So what does the pilot think happened? Start to use more fuel. Using more fuel. Did he use more fuel? No. I say he because she would know better. So... <laughs> So, pilot tells you that fuel flow went up, but all indications are it didn't. CHT, EGT may not. So, don't get tricked on that. Man, my fuel flow is way too high. Your fuel flow is not high. Your pressure is too high. The opposite could happen. You could get a blockage right here, and air is not coming in, which means this is going into a cylinder, which is sucking fuel in now more than the others because when it sucks normally it draws in a little bit of air but now it can't draw the air so it sucks out more fuel so this one runs rich, rich and this one runs Lean. and the pressure went down. down so pilot says gallons per hour went down, down. so don't let it trick you what's that yes because uh, they're gonna have some temperature issues and a bunch of other things that aren't right they will, because keep in mind, now we're getting into fuel injected engines. Um, well, I have one, but the, the more complicated the engine, the more gauges you're going to get, the higher the cost of the aircraft, the more likely you're going to see um, people with engine monitors monitoring every cylinder, CHT and EGT. And when they start to get a spread that they're not used to, especially in fuel injected engines, CHTs are pretty close, EGTs are pretty close. Um, and when they start to see a weird spread come on and then the, you know, your engine monitor starts telling you you've got too much spread between cylinders and they start watching that stuff and it's like, you'll be hearing about it. So they'll notice it. All right, so yeah, that was the whole system right there. Um, you can have a potential, yes. You said there was a diaphragm on the flow divider? Mm-hmm. And how is that driven? Right here. So here's the diaphragm on the flow divider. And so when the fuel shuts off, then there's no pressure right here. This poppet right here drops down and fuel shuts off. No fuel. But when fuel starts to flow, it comes up through here, through here, presses here, presses the poppet up, 
this thing right here goes up and allows fuel to flow that way. And I don't know what that little egg is for. <laughs> Good. All right, automatic mixture control is an option. How do you think it works? I feel like we've already seen this before. Not anymore. I feel like you've never seen this before. Sometimes I'm just tired looking at the screen, so I just kind of yeah. All right, so we go up in altitude. We have a sealed bellows, which expands or contracts? Expands. Then right down in this area down in here, we have what kind of needle? A tapered inverted needle. Inverted. It's smaller here than it is here, so it's inverted. And as it expands, it will drop down, opening this area right here, which means that our impact air coming in here has an alternate route around through to Venturi air, which lowers AMF, AMF which causes the ball to close. close, which sends less pressure this way, which means less fuel. Less fuel. Less pressure, less flow. And as it gets cold or we get go down in altitude, then this will Contract. shrink, causing this needle right here to start sealing up that hole, and then we're back to running richer. Yes. Ta-da-ta. -ta. That's how that works. Oops. I just want to stay where I'm at. Okay. What's that? Is there a diagram of like the whole thing like put together? Like right there? <laughs> that? Oh, so like there's like hoses in between the There is no hoses between this part, right? Maybe you can't see that. There are no hoses between this and this. This is one piece. It, you can't in a drawing because of the way it's shaped. Still grab one and take it apart. Uh, it looks like that. <laughs> looks like that. <laughs> if you would have asked me sooner, I would have brought one over. We only have one, I think. The biggest problem with these things. Mechanics. Um, there's a flow divider. These are the injector lines. We'll talk more about flow dividers, injector lines as we go. The V-slot. I have more to talk about. There. Impact tubes. Continental. The end. What does Poppy's number nine have to do with it? Well, you have to stay tuned and find out. If I told you now, you wouldn't pay attention. Uh, okay, where did I leave off here? Example operation, we covered that. Let me see, uh, I did that. Um, oh, why, why, why is that? Three. All right. Um, so kind of... Up to eight was my um, example, which we covered with the numbers and stuff. And uh, Oh, eight up to 10, I guess. Now I'm at point 11. That's what I'm telling you. Point 11, important points. Let me see. I'm just not important. I'll say other. Other points, because... It's all important. Other points. Things I wrote down here. Uh, fuel flow to engine. So fuel flow to engine is a function of jet size and pressure differential across a jet. I 
think this came from the fuel pump movie. He said, the servo does not meter fuel. No, he wouldn't have said that, but something else. Does not meter fuel. It only, it can, it only controls the pressure differential. Across it. Maybe that's a confusing point, kind of a weird way of going about saying that you just have to, you don't even have to remember this. You can kind of figure out how it works without it, but it, so much of it has to do with pressure and not flow. You get the flow from the pressure, right? It's like with any orifice, you're going to get a certain flow at a certain pressure. What happens if you increase the pressure going at the orifice? It increases the flow. So which is point A, flow to the engine is a function of jet size and pressure. Uh, let's see, idle circuit. This has some funky things about it. As with the pressure carb, as with the pressure carb, and float carb, There is not enough air through the venturi at idle. So idle doesn't work. So we got to fix it. So what are they going to use? An idle this time we use two. Two springs are installed on either side of the air diaphragm. The Bendix system. It's the the Bendix. Okay, so um, the RSA is the one the one that's being used across the board. It's not like there's like when you talked about the PS5. There's a different dash numbers. This also has different dash numbers and stuff, which might have automatic mixture control or might not. And I'm sure a certain amount of the part number dash numbers have to do with the size of the jets in it, everything else. But for the most part, every single Lycoming fuel injection system is the Bendix RSA. All of them. That's the only one you're going to see. If uh, I don't think you're going to see the RS. I think they're all too old to be used anymore. They would have been updated. So that's his, this system, the Lycoming system. So we have two diaphragms, uh, two springs on either side of the diaphragm. One is called the constant head idle spring. Or the CHIS for short, I'd never do that. So the constant head keyword there is idle spring. And that helps add AMF, air metering force, at low RPM. So how's it do that? Well, it helps to keep the ball off its seat as RPM increases, spring is compressed into a housing into a housing that effectively keeps spring from adding force.
This just calls it a conf constant effort spring. But what am I calling it? Oops, because that's the wrong spring to talk about. Did I go by two? What the heck is this thing? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just reading down there. This shows both springs. All right. So we have the constant effort spring and the constant head idle, idle spring. And that's how I remember the two. So it's constant effort, which I'll talk about, and the constant head idle spring. Um, all right. So if we take a look at this right here, what is this? This kind of bugs me. I like the other one so much better now with the. Uh, which chamber do I have right here, the first one? Metered. Metered. So that's metered. This one is? Unmetered. This one is? More of it's going to tend to open the valve. So is that impact or suction? Impact. Okay. What am I missing? All right, that's got to be here then. So where's the constant hit idle spring? Which chamber? That's how I figured it out. Okay. So in the video, I do a real good job of dissecting this because I really spent some time going, what are they trying to show here? And I came up with some reasons why I felt like the drawing was a little bit inaccurate. Um, but that spring is going to be pressing from here to here to push this that way, that way, attached to here, which is going to open, open the poppet. The only way it's going to work is if it does that. And so in this position then, um, this would push it to the right and open it up. And then I said that at some point, the housings hit and the spring does not put any more effort into this. So that to me means that this drawing is showing it in the open position, or it should be. It should be open in some way. I mean, if it's closed right here, then the spring isn't working to begin with. So uh, it's all kind of drawn weird. So you can't, can't figure heads or tails out of this thing. Is it open? Is it closed? What's going on? The thing that you need to remember, because you're like, oh, crap, what is he talking about? What's going on? Um, what does the constant head idle spring do? This is it right here. What does the constant head idle spring do? It increases the head opens the poppet valve at because it's not enough airflow not enough airflow so the so what causes the fuel to flow at idle it's the constant head idle spring there you go all right we have the constant head idle spring and number 2 we have the constant effort constant spring Uh, this one supplements the transition, the transition, from idle to servo regulator. Control. Supplements the transition from idle to servo regulator control. What's controlling it at idle? Constant. Idle spring. And so this helps the transition between the two. Um, servo regulator control. And spring helps move the air diaphragm. smoothly from low to higher power settings. Stephen, why are you looking at that screen? This is your screen. <laughs> you put all your water bottles Evan's, in Evan's big head is what he just said. <laughs> yeah, it's like five things. 
know, you always like put all your dishes in front of the TV. The water bottle, chair. the speaker, the microphone, the chair, the chair, chair. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> your cat. Sorry. You guys, you guys, <laughs> where am I? I can't put it next to the microphone because then this guy will hear you. You know man? <laughs> you guys good? Okay. Yeah, what if you were behind us? <laughs> How about I go in my office and sit down and let you figure it out? All right, constant effort spring is right here. That is in between this piece right here, which. Uh, not a diaphragm. Yeah. Nope. So here's a the wall. seal right in here. There's the seal. So this is the fuel side. This is the air side. So this is in the air side. And it's going to press against this, that. And it's going to push the diaphragm to the right, which is tends to open. open the servo valve. So constant effort spring is located right there. So we have two springs. Yes. Constant head idle spring, which helps transition to, or helps keep the poppet open at. And the constant effort spring, which helps to transition to idle. There you go. Uh, we have the idle circuit. And the servo is connected. Connected to throttle linkage. I'll come back around and write some notes on this one, but So what I said is the idle circuit in the servo, or this part right here, which we talked about a little bit ago, which controls these right here, okay? That is connected oops, directly to the throttle plate. So you can see that right here, goes up in here, and this pin right here is directly connected to the throttle. So as I open the throttle, it's going to open the plates. Well, in between the two, there is an idle mixture adjustment. So when you mess with that screw right there, it unscrews the linkage to make it longer or shorter. And it's kind of weird. One side has coarse thread, one side has fine thread, which is a very funny thing. What's that? It's a star adjuster for Yeah. It's a star adjuster for Fabrice? That sounded interesting. Drum brakes. Would that be spare brakes in your car? Oh, yeah, so yeah. 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 Do you use two different frequencies to unwind the bolts so that they don't back out? Uh, no, there's a... Do they work against each other? Yeah, it's just the way it expands it and contracts it very... Because you can't have a real coarse adjustment. It's got to move a little tiny bit. So this wheel right here is uh, looks like... So you want a finer adjustment on your idle valve? So that wheel kind of looks like this. It's got these cutouts and there's a spring that goes right through here and just goes right through one of these little cutouts right here to hold it in place. That's all there is. So you just pick up the little lightweight spring and you can move it. You can move it with the spring in place. So you need a very fine adjustment. So like each click could not be like a um, 1032 screw or 1028. That's too much movement. So by doing coarse and fine it in the way they do it, it, it allows it to do a much finer adjustment, I think, per revolution, instead of course. And so that then, imagine if you kept the throttle in one place, but you open this up a little bit more, a little bit more, close that a little more, a little more, that allows you to get your idle mixture in there just right. So that's how you do your idle mixture. You will. No, not on this one. <laughs> Uh, okay, idle linkage and servos. Let me see. Um, at idle, the main jet is reduced in size. So this creates 
a larger pressure differential. Um, at fuel metering force, at fuel metering force, which tends to close the valve. It's a larger pressure differential, so it tends to close well. Enrichment system. I don't feel like I could explain that better, but let's see. Let's go to let's see this one. Let's see if that makes sense. At idle, the main jet is reduced in size. So where's my idle jet? Right here. This one right there is reduced in size. Creating a larger pressure differential. So if this were 5, then this would be, say, 1 less. So 5 minus 1 equals 4. So if that is four, it's going to want to close it. Well, that stands, that creates through then. Creates a larger pressure differential at fuel meter force, which tends to close the poppet. So that sentence does make sense. And if I open this up a little bit, and then this became two, then it's going to want to open the pot. Close less. I like that. All right. Uh, enrichment system. Well, do you remember the enrichment system? Sure. Some engines, and by engines I mean some part numbers that it calls for fuel servo, use an enrichment jet parallel to the main jet. So as throttle is opened, Enrichment jet is opened. Allowing more fuel to the fuel divider. That's a lot of silence for me. All right. Garrett, what's that? The ignition control in this, it looks like it would be active at Mixture control is active at idle. Okay. Right, because the red knob works at idle. It's two separate knobs. So, like, oh yeah. Um, where's my picture here of that? Let me see. There we go. Right there, laser pointer right there. That hole is covered. The hole is covered. We go to take off position, that hole is open. That is the? And there you go. So now you got two jets coming out, dumping more fuel. More fuel. Right there. Parallel, so there'd be a, a parallel path coming through here somewhere. It's like there should be another one on the bottom. Yeah, that's what I was wondering yeah. when we first talked about that. And I was like, where's the other hole? Yeah, that's why I said some of them have it. This one doesn't. All right, enrichment system. It's time I have just one minute. Um, that's probably a good place to stop because tomorrow we'll talk about H manual mixture control.